Hi folks, I want this Haas to make obscenely good surface finishes. I've actually been really happy. We've been using a Sandvik 290 face mill as well as um, this Mitsubishi ASX to date, and I have no complaints. They're both great. Um, this Mitsubishi, you know, it's got the polished positive inserts. Seriously, great. But there's another cutter I want to try called the Sandvik 590. And what's cool about it is it's got adjustable pocket height. Here's the thing, no matter what you do, there's no way when something is just machined, or I don't think these are ground, that all one, two, three, four, five inserts are coplanar. They're all gonna have slightly different height. So what's cool about this is it lets us adjust those in either so that they're coplanar or so we can add a wiper insert. And the wiper insert actually looks different and we'll probably put it like a thou proud or lower. So it's going to be the only thing, kind of like the Tormach Superfly, which we get phenomenal finishes with. The wiper is going to be the one that does all the final cutting. The other thing that's different about this, so one, adjustable pockets, two, using a wiper, and three, just simply the insert geometry itself. Uh, right now we've got regular inserts. I also have some CBNs maybe? Forget, I don't want to misspeak. Um, so the Sandvik guy's coming tomorrow. We're going to run this as a, tri it's a trial tool, demo tool. I want to get those pockets dialed in. So let's take a closer look at that and then more to come, probably another video where we're actually going to run test cuts to figure out how we can get stupid good finishes. One of the products that we have been making and selling with the Haas is this eight by six inch vice palette or mini palette. And you can see not bad finishes, right? And we got our little logo engraved in there. Each hole takes a quarter inch, uh, quarter 20 threaded fastener or a quarter inch dowel pin. It's a really good fit. You can see the dowel pin holes right there. So we're super proud of these. If you like what we do and you want to support the channel, link here and cart here to pick one of these up. Let's dive in. Take a look at these inserts and the way they are totally different. They've got serrations on the back and that causes the insert to track only vertically up and down. So what that means is that means when we adjust this little piece here and it lifts and pushes the insert up and down, you're, it's only up and down. In other words, it's not twisting that insert. How the hell do these work though? So I actually originally thought that that was some sort of a cam that rotated and then I realized, well, that's not right. And then I thought this thing slid back and forth caused it kind of like, uh, well, basically as it, it was an inclined plane. So as it changed its d distance, it was changing the distance relative from the top of the tool to there. But now I think I figured it out. So I think literally as you drive that screw in, the further in you push it, the more you're pushing up, you're deforming the metal, which is, you've only got, I think, two or three thou of movement. And it's kind of hard to see, but I think you're literally just deforming this and pushing it up and hey, I could be wrong, but I think that's how it works. Regular, see the angle? Wiper, flat spot. I would like to be able to turn the screw while the insert is on the indicator needle. I thought maybe I could use the spindle orient command. So if you take a look, I got really lucky. Uh, I tr literally like the second try. M19 is spindle lock. And then P200, I think this is angle. So if you hit enter, that puts it into a temporary program. I'll hit cycle start. And I like that orientation, but there's just a little bit of play. So I don't know, maybe that's just, that's maybe that's Haas of spin the lock. It comes back to the center, so we'll see. Turn off the spin the lock. Find the high spot, about right there. You know, I want to I want to be dead nuts, but don't worry about that at first. At first, let's just see where we're at. Um, I'm on pocket number one, by the way. This is five. That's number one. So that's zero. Let's see if that looks right. Link in the video description, you gotta have this Noga base with the uh, adjustable base to do this kind of work. And this is a tense indicator, so each tick is one ten thousandth of an inch.
Why do I, if I go to zero there, why do I keep finding a new high spot? That should be zero. Okay, two tenths. Man. Okay. Zero. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Yeah, we're hitting zero for just a split second or, you know, a fraction underneath it. So let's check out in that pocket five. Oh, not bad. Three tenths over. <laughs> Spot on. See that? Isn't that amazing? It almost is different depending on which way you come at it, which shouldn't be the case. That's zero, but I can't seem to get zero. Isn't that weird? Hmm. Make no assumptions. Three tenths. By the way, this is probably the one time where I would consider, I don't even own one, using a digital, they make digital test indicators? They make digital height gauges because then you can store the max value. Yeah, right on. I mean, a tenth. So this thing's pretty damn good, but damn it, tenths matter. All tenths matter. I feel like John Grimshaw right now. Zero, or back to one. So the, let's just play with the one that was the worst. There were a couple that were three tenths out, right? Now the problem is that that's reading a bigger number, which means it's lower. I can't go higher with it. I have to bring the other ones down, I think. So let's do this. Let's see if I can get pocket number one, which is this guy. So when I come at it when I uh, this way, like I'm making a cut, I'm never getting more than zero. So let's loosen my insert. I'm going to do it off the indicator. I just don't think it's going to work. So that's loose. And let's, I hope my can's not in the way. Let's turn this insert in a uh, quarter turn. Oh. Consistency of the insert torque is important too. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure this tool is the right tool. It's one of the tool it came with. I gotta talk to the Corey tomorrow uh, about that. Something I'm learning on the Haas is how much stuff like that matters, even on our vices. Okay, we were gonna come at it like we were making a cut. Haha, I did. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a, oh my God. Whoa, way too much. Uh, okay, darn it. I didn't think I, well, that, that's sensitive. Let's see, before I start making adjustments per se, or targeting adjustments, let's just turn this back a quarter turn and let's see if it goes back to zero. So undo it a quarter turn. In other words, is it consistent like that? It's, I find it's good to build confidence with what you're doing before you start, you know, going for the final task. Yep, you know, I'm not doing it perfectly a quarter turn, but I'm about half a tenth, uh, yeah, half a tenth over. So let's loosen the insert. And this time, let's just go a smidge. Um, I don't know, you know, the serial number skew is right there. Let's just turn it about like that. Maybe a quarter of a quarter turn. A 
a 16. I mean, I'm not that precise with estimates here. Well, two and a half. Yeah, I mean, but then half a 10, boy, I don't, I can't imagine I'm gonna spend the time to get more dialed in than that. And look, my goal here in the end is to hope that the wiper can sit a little proud and do all the finish work, because this is fun, but I don't know, it doesn't, well, we'll see, I'm learning. Number five, okay, so let's set that as my new zero. Because I gotta bring others down to it. Right there. Always go behind before zero and sneak back up on it because that's the direction that we're measuring from. Okay. So five. Five is still reading two tenths proud. Let's go back to one. Is it still? Yeah, a little more than one of zero. But half or so. Um, okay, so five I gotta work on. Let's see where's that, where's four at? I mean, really within a 10. Yeah. Two tenths over. Zero, two is good, and we're back to one. It's like one, it's, man, it's a tenth over. So I think we gotta move everything in. Gosh, I'm not sure I wanna mess with it. Yeah, you know what, we're gonna call it. So I'm gonna call it at that. Stick around, folks. Please click subscribe, comment below. I love learning. I started out as a self-taught machinist 10 years ago. I cannot believe I am adjusting a state-of-the-art Sandvik cutter with the wiper inserts on a Haas. I love my life. Um, but I know you guys wanna see cutting, and I didn't mean to deprive you of that here. We're gonna do that tomorrow, and we're gonna run some test cuts. So we will be back with cutting and more. I'll throw a card up to that stuff, that video with cutting, when we get it published. Otherwise, take care, folks. See you soon.